Girls, it's Miss Coker. So yesterday we were using our circle models to represent fractions equal or equivalent to one whole. We're going to keep working with these circle models today, so keep these handy. Yesterday I left you with the challenge to try to find fractions equivalent or equal to one half using your circle model. Before we get started today, I wanted to share some pictures of students who actually did this. Here is a friend. He found, well, three different ways to find fractions equivalent to one half. And he labeled them. I can see that he labeled three sixths as being equal to one half. Here are some other ways that a friend found fractions equal or equivalent to one half. Now, our friend Caden here pointed out something really important to us. He said, Miss Coker, I can find lots of ways using our circle models to find fractions equivalent to one half. But he said the one way that he could not do was using the thirds. Because he is right, thirds cannot represent one half. One third is just too small. And two thirds are just too big. I love getting to see our friends do math, especially when it comes to using manipulatives or drawings. Um, that was some great thinking. So today I wanted to tell you uh, a little bit about myself when I was growing up doing math. I always thought of myself as not being good at mathematics because I struggled and I always tried to figure out why. Why we need to be doing this and why does that work? Uh, and teachers didn't always like when I asked them why. Uh, but now we're realizing that asking why in math is really a good thing because it helps you make sense of the math that you're doing. So today's lesson is all about why. Why do we find equivalent fractions? Now there's lots of reasons why to find equivalent fractions, but I figured I would take you into my kitchen and show you one way that I use almost every day. Uh, so when I cook, I use a lot of finding equivalent fractions. Now these are my favorite measuring cups. I only take these out once in a while, so I figured I'd take them out and show them to you today. And I don't know if you can see these, but they look kind of like the same shapes that we used yesterday with our circle models. This right here is one whole cup. This right here is the half cup. And you can actually see it looks like half of that whole circle. This right here is the, the third cup. And if you wanted to, you can even figure out that three of these thirds makes up that whole cup. Now the reason I use equivalent fractions in the kitchen is because a lot of times when I'm baking or cooking, some of my measuring cups are actually dirty or in the dishwasher and I have to improvise. Let's take a look at a problem. The other day I was baking an apple pie and I needed to measure out one half cup sugar for the pie. But of course my half cup measuring cup was in the dishwasher. Is it possible to use my fourth cup to measure out one half cup of sugar? Use your circle models to solve this problem. And then, if it is possible, what fraction did you find is equivalent or equal to that one half cup? So let's take a look at my circle models for solving this problem. I wanted to measure out one half cup of sugar, but my half cup was dirty. So I tried to use the fourth cup measuring cup instead. Is it possible? Well, let's see. I can measure out one fourth cup and another fourth cup. And indeed, yes, it's possible. I measured out a total of one half cup or amount equal to one half cup. So that means that two fourths is equal or equivalent to one half. So next, I needed to measure out three fourths of a cup of apples. Is it possible to use my third cup measuring cup to measure out apples? Is there a fraction with a denominator of three that is equivalent to three fourths. So let's take a look at how you could have used your circle models to solve this problem. We needed three fourths of a cup 
of apples. And we're trying to figure out if we could use the one third cup measuring cup to measure out our apples. Let's see. Mm. Well, two thirds of a cup is not quite enough. Oh, yikes, but one more third, making it three thirds of a cup, is just too much because that's one whole cup. So it looks like we can't use the third cup measuring cup to solve this. What if I had a one eighth cup? Would it be possible to measure three fourths of a cup of apples using my one eighth cup? Again, use your fraction models, your circle models, to solve this problem. If this is possible, what fraction did you find that is equivalent to 3 fourths? Now let's see how you could have used your eighths to figure out if we can measure out 3 fourths of a cup. Well, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, we're not there yet, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, it looks like we might make it. 5 eighths is not enough, but 6 eighths is exactly enough. So 6 eighths is equal to 3 fourths. Now I'll leave you with the challenge. Use your circle models to solve each of these problems. Remember, as mathematicians, it is important to visualize what we are working with using either models or drawings. So your challenge is to find a fraction that is equal or equivalent to one-third, a fraction that is equal or equivalent to two-eighths, a fraction equal or equivalent to two-thirds, and a fraction equal or equivalent to six-eighths. Have a good day, boys and girls.